Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. I am here at the world famous NPL Cashmere store on Madison Avenue with one of my best friends. I would even say Mishpucha, you know, family. Matt Spazer, Bond Suits, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well, David. How are you? You are doing well. Doing well, very well. You've got uh, champagne. I have, yeah. I've got Vespers. Mm. Beautiful. Let's take a sip because you've got a book. What, let's see what you're holding in your hand right now. Oh my gosh! I am so proud of this book well, right now, you, and David. so proud of you and thank what you've you. done. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh my gosh! So, so let's talk about a subject that is near and dear to our heart. We are surrounded by the Bond brand NPL Cashmere, but lest anybody thinks it's not that easy for a Bond brand to get into a Bond movie. No. Like, how does it even happen? It happens all different ways. Mm. You know? I mean, there's there's not one one story. Everyone has their own story, don't they? They do. They do. So your book recounts some of those ways. Is it is it is it a mixture of people knowing people or preference or even paying to be in a movie? It can be any of those. I mean, sometimes and lately, Daniel Craig just brings his favorite brands to the Bond series, which is which is I think is a great way to you know to uh, to for Bond to wear these brands and to. Uh, I just, I just love that you know that James Bond, the actor, is wearing the clothes that he loves to wear. And there's something something special about that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of Bond actors have done that. But well, that's a great question. Yeah. Is is that a new thing? For example, let's start with Roger Moore. Did Roger Moore say and have an influence on what Bond brands were used? I think he did. You know, it, the answers to that were never quite clear. Mm. But you know, a lot of the brands that he wore as Bond, he he was wearing before. So you know, I'm wearing a shirt from Frank Foster, and he was beautiful wearing, shirt he, by the way. Thank you. He was wearing. Is this Voil? This is Voil. It's it's great in this hot day. Oh I just stepped gosh. outside, and it's a lot hotter than it was before. Good lord. So you know, we'll it, stay inside. <laughs> but you know, so the great thing is that um, you know, I mean, so he was wearing Frank Foster shirts for a number of years before he was Bond. Right. You know, when he started as Bond in Live and Let Die, his tailor was Cyril Castle. Cyril Castle oh, had been with him oh, through the Saint yeah. many years earlier, over a decade earlier. He had been using this tailor, and then he brings him into Bond. So wow. that's a great thing. I and I, I think you know, it, it makes it just kind of ties the clothes together with yes. with the act and with Bond, it just makes them, I think the, the actors more, more, more comfortable wearing their favorite clothes. And we, we see that with Daniel Craig these days. It, hugely, in I, fact, I, you know, one of the things, sorry, I'm going to do like, this is real folks, we, we, don't, we don't edit too much here. I mean, I'm, I'm holding the, the Skyfall sweater, which is kind of what started the NPL Yeah, that was the first here, one. Right? It, it's, it's, I mean, the timeless sweater is beautiful. I mean, I, it's a great color, isn't it? It's a beautiful color, and and you've actually noted that it's a Bond color. Yeah, I mean, I mean blue. Any, kind, any kind of blue is a Bond color. I mean, right. Bond, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, NPL did the the uh, you know the Lazenby uh, blue. Yeah. Skiing. You know, that's another blue. Oh, another. That's another. We've got so many another here. great blue item that you know. That, um, you know, that's connected with Bond. So it's, it's, it's and, and, and then the No Time to Die sweater, which is another blue. More and more blue here too for the uh, the Fear Eyes Only. I'm thinking blue is so, Bond. Bond is blue. I mean, Bond has always been blue. And, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, Matt, we've got to talk about this because one of the things that I love about the influence of Bond mm -hmm. on these different items that we're talking about right here is when you talk about this, what I love that you did in the book itself is you talk about storytelling. Like there is a story for each one of these tellers and each, each one of these moments that we see of Bond yeah. is people behind it. Mm -hmm. How does that come about? I mean, there's not one way it comes about, but... So many. You know, there's so many, so many ways. But I think just it's the people that really make all these things special. Yes. You know these these clothes are, are made by people. It's the people people who design them, people who think about them, and yeah. how they work for Bond, how they work for us. That's an important part. If, how does it work for us? Because we're we're Bond lifestylers. We like to wake up in the morning, and whether it's conscious or unconscious, we we tend to emulate certain aspects, whether it's fit or look or feel. So Matt showed up today. And he, he has a hop sack, he's got the voile, and I said, it's 91 degrees, how are you going to survive? And he's like, uh, David, I'm sorry, it's not my first rodeo. Uh, this well, is going to yeah, bring I'm, I'm not just like Sean Connery arriving in Jamaica and Dr. No in a flannel suit and, 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 a, and a felt hat. 
that that probably wasn't you know he he, he wasn't thinking about where he was going at that point. Right. I think he uh, or he just didn't have time to change before M sent him off. Yeah. He had to dress for London. It must have been cold in London as he was leaving. But great know, point. You know, but you know and. I think, you know, Bond always thinks about what he's been going to wear for the purpose. Yeah. And I think we should always think about the purpose that these clothes serve. That was so beautifully said because one of the things I do when I'm going somewhere, even today, even this morning, I got up in the morning and, and we're here in New York City. And I said to myself, all right, it's going to be this environment. I'm going to be with these people in these situations. Um, and it's also going to be this temperature. So it's like it's almost like forecasting. You know, yeah. here are all the things you've got to take in, and this is what I'm going to choose. Yeah, I mean, I definitely I chose this. Um, it's a Bondian piece, isn't it? It's a Bondian piece. It's not a, from a Bond brand, but right. I, I think it's it's something that you know, Roger Moore loved. Hopsack blazers. He wears them in warm places, and um, so it, that's just kind of what I think about when yeah. I want to uh, dress like Bond. I think about what does Bond wear in these types of situations. I mean, I'm sure if Roger Moore was coming to this event, he event he would have worn a blue blazer. He would have, wouldn't hey, he? All right. I mean, he kind of wore one to anything. He, he did. He but, was but, in so much, which but, I love him. Yeah, but it was just you know, it's just the kind of thing that that you can kind of just put on. You want to look look, look put together. Yes. It's just an easy thing to wear. All right. So, last question, and I didn't prepare Matt for this, so. This could go anywhere, folks. Prepare yourself. I'm glad he's got a couple of glasses of champagne in him. No Time to Die. As a sartorial, and I'm going to call it, you would not do this. As a sartorial guru and expert within the Bond community, you are the hub. I'm, I'm calling you that. You're not calling yourself that. Mm -hmm. What are you hoping for? What are you, what are you wanting to see Bond do and wear from a sartorial standpoint? I, I, I want to see him do cool things while wearing a suit. That's, that's kind of what I, I love yes. seeing him do those things. I, I love I, you know one of my favorite moments. It's it's not like it, it's not like 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 the most like exquisitely tailored suit in the series. One of my favorite moments is in, is in Living Daylights when Bond is wearing his dinner suit. He flips up the jacket, uh -huh. turns into a tactical uh, piece of clothing. Yes, you know, you know that that is one of my favorite oh. sartorial moments of the Bond series yeah. because it's it just it shows like what you can do like just a cool thing that a suit can do. Like it, it's just. So so Bondian, no one, no one else would do that. Such a perfect and, and thing. And it, it works so well, you know. It, you know it's and um, and it works for his profession. It works, yeah. He's an assassin. Yeah, and he's serves, creating an assassin it environment. It serves the, the perfect, you know, purpose in, in the in, exa in that in, the, in that instance. I, that's the kind of moment I really want to see more in Bond with clothing. I, I want to see just those kind of cool things happen. Yes. You know, it goes back to, you know, like, like Goldfinger when, you know, James Bond, at the beginning Goldfinger when he takes off the, uh, the, the dry suit and he has the, the dinner jacket <laughs> yes. underneath. Like, th those are just cool clothing moments. Because only Bond could do that. Yeah. They're, they're, but it, that, that did happen, you know, in history. That was actually a real thing that someone did. Is that right? Yeah. I actually, Wait, I read about that in the book. That is that is mentioned in the book. There's um, I've read it there twice. Was, there, was a, there was a story in the book. Really? There was a story that uh, about um, a uh, I think it was a World War II soldier who did who did that. Oh my gosh! And uh, so the, like Bond does these you know these are, these aren't just like movie magic things. Right. These, they are things that people can do in real life. Now most people couldn't get away with that. I mean, who's right. gonna, I, I I'm probably not going to be like swimming to a nightclub. To uh, the day is young. He's going to be swimming to a nightclub. You'll see. Yeah. <laughs> There are there are so many cool things that yeah. you can do with clothes that I, I want to see like Bond do. Oh my gosh! All right, so one of the things um, that because you you opened up this this wonderful can of worms is with the NPO Commando sweater. I'm curious to see like how many diff. Oh, look at that! What what what? We have a what? picture from from Peter Brooker's collection. I love it. So I'm wondering how often and where he's going to wear this in the film itself. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's a, such a it's it's definitely a purpose-built uh, garment. It's going to be, you know, I mean, we know that it's going to be for action. Yes. We we know that it, it's it's not just something he's wearing casually. We know it, there's a purpose for it. Yeah. Because it has a military look. It's it's derived from a military sweater. Yeah. So, I, you know, we're going to see Bond wearing that. Some in badass a, crescendo moment, right? Some yeah. attack. Yeah. I mean, we saw in, in the trailer that that shot of him. Yes. We know he's going to be doing some cool things in it. And, and it's, you know, it's a, I think it's a great thing for Bond because it has a military history. Yeah. You know, Bond always needs that. He always has to think about the military, you know, that military background that Bond has. You can't forget that. No. And, and so I think that's, well, that's one reason why it's a great garment for yeah. Bond. 
and we're, um, but it's also it's not like it's a, it's a flexible piece. You can something he can move in something, that, yeah. which I love. Yeah, so practicality it, it is has like, practicality. Um, I don't <laughs> don't ignore that. Yeah, <laughs> nobody saw that on the video. I don't know how it's you know I mean we don't know exactly what's going to be doing he's going to be doing in it like we don't know if if, um, if Q Branch provides him with this military garment or if he finds it some other way right you know, that, that I might be interested to see how how that how this you know the, how he comes to be wearing this like is it yes. something that's been been in the back of his closet for for uh, you know for, for decades I don't know and that's no, the no. thing it's like you know I love when a piece in a Bond film tells a story like what is the backstory. What's the front yeah. story? What's the story you see in the film? I mean, even if we don't see a story in the film, we can always think about what the story behind this this garment might can be. Imagine it, because th th there's there's going to be. I mean, th th this this is a garment with with history and something that we can you know we can definitely think about. Absolutely. All right. Listen, we have taken up so much of Matt's time. First of all, Matt, let me see the book again. Everyone out there, I want to congratulate Matt and Peter for this unbelievable mountain climb with this book. Uh, there's a lot of great things in here. There's a lot of great things in here. We're going to enjoy the day. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. And check out bondsuits.com in case you haven't, but of course you have because you're on this channel. And also this has been David Zerski for The Bond Experience. We're going to drink some more champagne and vespers. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.